Today, we're using blog 344. All you do is substitute the blog number to have a user-friendly link to get you right there. All I want to mention from review of the past two sessions is my system for a rhythmic interpretation. Watch your P's and Q's and the three R's. Remind you of the five parameters you want to use for any arrhythmia, fast rhythms, slow rhythms. So looking for P waves or atrial activity, is the QRS wide or is it narrow? And the three R's being the rate of the rhythm, this is both the atrial and ventricular rhythm, the regularity, and if there are P waves, are they related to the QRS complex? Does not, does not matter in what sequence you ask yourself these questions, as long as you always assess all five of these parameters. Here is the rhythm. How would you interpret this rhythm? Choices are sinus rhythm with blocked PACs. Is there AV dissociation? Complete AV block? Second degree AV block, Mobitz type 1. Second degree block, Mobitz type 2. How many think it's complete AV block? Watch your P's and Q's. And I use watch your P's and Q's in the three R's. This is my system for any rhythm. Now, I can do this in real time. This doesn't slow you down. On the contrary, it speeds me up. But the beauty of this system, number one, is you sound like you know what you're doing. You sound smart, even if all you're doing is stalling until you can think of the particular answer but it gives you the five things you need to think of that prevents you from missing anything. And sometimes, no matter how good you are with rhythms, sometimes I don't know what the rhythm is, but if I can describe presence of atrial activity, QRS with, and the three R's, I've narrowed down my differential diagnosis. So let's think about those five parameters. p -way. When I showed you this rhythm, hopefully you all saw that they're P waves. One of the easiest things to do that I find tremendously helpful is to label P waves. Isn't it a whole lot easier to see the P waves? Isn't it easier now to tell that these P waves are at least fairly regular? How many have heard of ventricular phasic sinus arrhythmia? And that's just a fancy word for saying a lot of times when you have a second degree or a third degree AV block, the rhythm is not totally regular. There is a sinus arrhythmia. Think about the other P's, Q's, 3 R's. Again, it doesn't matter what sequence we ask ourselves, but I always go through these in my mind. The QRS, is it wide or narrow? to realize what percentage of a 12-lead ECG do we have on this single-lead rhythm strip. We only got one twelfth. So it's possible on occasion that a part of the QRS may lie on the baseline at the one lead you're monitoring. So always, I like to get a 12-lead if your patient is stable. But looking at this, this really looks narrow. So until we know otherwise, narrow QRS. How about the ventricular rhythm? Is the ventricular rhythm regular throughout? And it's fairly regular for most of the rhythm except in the beginning. The rate, what is the ventricular rate? And let's for the moment just forget about the first two beats. How many large boxes in the RTAR interval? One, two, three, four, five, a little bit more than six boxes. The rate is a little bit under 50 beats per minute. P waves, are they related to the QRS complex? That's the third R. And for the AV blocks, that is key. How do we know if P waves are at all related to the QRS complex? And the way we know is you focus your eye on each of the QRSs, look in front of it, look for a P wave. Look at each QRS, look in front of it. Again, I'm gonna forget about these first two beats for the moment. Look at this PR interval. 
is the PR interval constant. Pretty constant, isn't it? So P waves are related at least some of the time. This P wave doesn't have any QRS near it. No neighboring QRS that's related to, but these P waves are related. These P waves are conducting. The AV blocks are not nearly as hard as many people make them out to be. There are only three degrees of AV block, first degree, second degree, and third degree, that's it. Third degree is a synonym for complete AV block. First degree AV block is easy to diagnose. And as I'm sure all of you that have experience with ECG interpretation know, all we're talking about is a sinus rhythm with a long PR interval. So we said that beats number three, four, five, six, and seven, they're all conducting because there's a constant PR interval and it is clearly more than a large box in duration. So there is a first degree AV block. Now, one of the things a lot of people don't realize the first time they hear it is you can have first degree AV block and second degree AV block. They're not exclusive. So we have at the least a first degree AV block. Third degree AV block, none of the P waves conduct. So we have the P waves doing their own thing. We have the ventricular rhythm doing its own thing. And basically there's none of the P waves that get through. This is surprisingly easy to diagnose. And a lot of people don't realize this. The reason third degree AV block is surprisingly easy to diagnose is because most of the time when you have an escape rhythm, the escape rhythm will be regular or at least fairly regular. If you look at a rhythm and the rhythm is not totally regular and there's an obviously irregular part, it's probably not third degree AV block. Look at this rhythm. Look now at all seven beats. What did we say about the first couple of beats? Is the QRS complex regular? No. So even before I look at P waves and the neighboring QRS complexes, just looking at the rhythm tells me that this is not going to be a third degree AV block. One of the best clues that you got a beat that's conducting is you see a beat that occurs earlier than you expect. This beat occurs early, it's probably conducting. So we have P waves that are present, a narrow QRS complex, P waves that are related. P waves that are dropped in an earlier than expected beat. What kind of AV block is this? Is it first degree? Well, yes, it's first degree, but it's not only first degree because they're also dropped beats. Is it third degree? No, because these P waves are related, fixed PR interval, and this beat occurs early. So we have second degree makes it easy. If it's not first degree and not third degree, but it's AV block, it's a type of second degree. Now, which type? And a lot of people just think that there are two types, but there are three types of second degree AV block. There is MOBITS-1, there is MOBITS-2, and there is second degree AV block with two to one AV conduction. Couple points. Number one, Mobitz 1 is a synonym for AV Winky Bach. The PR interval gets progressively longer until you drop a beat and then the cycle begins again. As opposed to Mobitz 2, where the PR interval is constant until you drop one or more beats. Now, the important clinical points with this. Mobitz 1, in my experience, 95% or more of all of the AV blocks I have ever in my life seen are going to be Mobitz 1. 
Mobitz 2 is uncommon, if not rare, but when you see it, it's much worse. It's usually at a lower level in the conduction system, which is why, unlike Mobitz 1, where the QRS tends to be narrow, the QRS tends to be wide with Mobitz 2, and you usually need a pacemaker. Now, what about this third type? Okay, this type, we have two to one conduction. Now, if we block out these first two beats, what do we have for beats three, four, five, six, seven? Conducts blocked, conducts blocked, conducts block. So we have a second degree AV block for beats number three through seven with two to one AV conduction or two to one AV block here. Do we ever see two conducted beats in a row that are progressively increasing? No. So the point of this third category is if you have a strict two to one block that you cannot tell with certainty whether or not you have Mobitz one or Mobitz two. And that's why there's a third category. Now, clinically, why is this important? Well, it's important because most of the time the prognosis is much, much, much better with Mobitz one, which is by far the most common form because you usually have a narrow QRS, which means that the block is at a higher level in the AV node. It's more likely to be associated with an inferior rather than an anterior infarction. And much of the time with acute uh, infarction, it's transient. Whereas Mobitz 2, the problem is you go from dropping one beat to all of a sudden ventricular standstill without any notice which is why if ever you see Mobitz 2, you need a pacemaker, which is why if we have two to one block, we want to find out which one it is. It is unlikely for a patient to go in and out of Mobitz 1, then to Mobitz 2, then to Mobitz 1. It's usually one or the other. So you may have a period of two to one AV block for five minutes, let's say, and then the patient has typical Mobitz 1 elsewhere on the tracing. So it's probably all Mobitz 1. Looking at this particular tracing before we focus on these first two beats, it's two to one block, but which one is it more likely? Mobitz 1. Why? Statistics, because it's almost always Mobitz 1 and the QRS is narrow. In my last couple of minutes, I'm going to talk about a ladder gram. It took me literally a decade, if not two decades, to be comfortable drawing ladder grams. But to understand ladder grams, you're going to be able to in the next five minutes. And ladder grams are great because they explain the mechanism of the rhythm. They just make it a lot easier to see what's going on. For any latogram, we have three tiers. Now, rarely there's a fourth tier if you have SA block, but SA block is rare. For practical purposes, there's travel through the atria, through the AV node, and through the ventricles. Along the horizontal axis is time. Now, travel, here's a P wave. Travel through the atria is fast. It's almost a straight line. Travel slows down a little bit as we go through the AV node. That's why this is angled. And then if you do not have a bundle branch block, travel through the ventricular conduction systems pretty fast. But here in white, this P wave is blocked. Doesn't get through the AV node. The next one conducts. The next one is blocked. The next one conducts and it's blocked. And then what happens with these first couple of beats. Well, here we have a P wave and this one conducts. And then here, what do we have? This PR interval is a little bit longer and then the beat is dropped. What is this? If we only look at this cycle, we have a narrow QRS, we have a PR interval that gets longer, the beat is dropped. And then with the next cycle, the PR interval becomes shorter again. 
So this is clear Mobitz 1, which tells us what about this whole rhythm? It tells us it's probably all Mobitz 1 because it's going to be highly unlikely to go back and forth from Mobitz 1 to Mobitz 2. And the QRS is narrow. 